my name is Tim Clements, I'm the Operations Manager of Fobster Key. Uh, we can have all sorts of people, all sorts of days, all sort of joined together by wanting to use the water in some way. Uh, and that leads to a lot of different things, so no two days are ever the same. I think we try pretty hard to make things easier uh, than other inland sites. There's a lot more benches, the booking system is slicker, we get people in, we get people out, uh, we have a lot more things going on. So I think that makes it, uh, makes it pretty different. So my name's Jeff. Um, I'm a swimmer here at Fobster. It's Fobster near Mells in Somerset. It's a quarry, a flooded quarry that's used for diving and swimming. I've been swimming here since 2013. I did a channel swim. I was practicing in 2013 to do that with a team. And uh, we've been swimming here ever since. We, we love swimming all year round. Uh, I tend to swim in skins, which means I don't swim in a wetsuit. And uh, yeah, we, we just love it. We've got a group of us come down here, the Bobster Lobsters, and uh, uh, yeah, we, we just love swimming down here. It's got physical health benefits, there's some mental health benefits. Um, it, it gets us together as a group of people. We really love uh, meeting up down here, come out here every Sunday, maybe a couple of times a week. So, uh, my name's Mark Colwick, I'm a, a commercial diver uh, with uh, Scuba Quest Limited. Uh, I'm Jack McLachlan, I'm also a commercial diver with Scuba Quest Limited. I suppose the, um, the reason I like to dive is it, it's, it's a good hobby, it gives me something different to do. Um, being in, underwater is a different environment, you see lots of different things, marine life, wrecks, gets you to go different places in the world. So yeah, it's a good thing to do. Yeah, I think I like to dive, um, I'm an ex-soldier um, in the British Army, so I primarily dive for military wrecks, um, so anything pretty much with a gun on, I'll go and dive it, and again, like Jack, I've pretty much dived all around the world doing that endeavour. Diving in the United Kingdom is a very um, difficult place to train for more than anything else because of the um, our environments, um, the weather, um, visibility of the water. So when you're training you need to be safe so to be able to see your students and um, you need to dive in an environment you know you'll be able to see them. Hence the reason why we dive in inland dive sites because we can be safe. The kind of diving you do, the deeper you go and the more time you have to decompress. Um, so the more time you decompress the more gas you need um, so you can carry significant amounts of cylinders to get back to the surface. So if, uh, if you're diving to 100 metres for every 5-10 minutes down there it's a 3-3-4 three, three, hour journey back home. Whereas with the rebreathers because you're recirculating the gas that you're using you don't need as much gas from that point of view. So logistically it's much easier, they're actually they're a lot more complicated but they're actually much safer because they've got a lot of redundant systems on board. So if you want to take, uh, go into that kind of diving then it's, it's really a no brainer. The other thing to think about is it's also silent. When you dive open circuit, you breathe in, bubbles go out so you'll get that constant noise. Whereas with a rebreather it's, it's just totally silent. It was previously a quarry. This is the Mendips, it's limestone. It was used for stone that went off for coated product, which to you and me is tarmac. With the sort of COVID lockdown thing, we went from a paper-based system where everyone just arrived by surprise to a booked system. Uh, and what that means is that now we know everyone who's coming here. We can give them the facilities that they need to deliver a, a, a good product and a good training session. They're not elbowing people for bench space. There are benches um, and we, spread everyone out between different sessions so that they've always got the time they need to actually train people. And I think that if you've got that less time stress you do better training. If there's better training there and more divers and more divers means you know more diving industry and there's enough squeeze on that at the moment so I think that probably helps. It's really clean here you don't get any of the shit that you get in the rivers and the sea which is horrible. Um, we do swim in rivers and the sea but only when it's when it's nice and clean. Um, but here is really clean, it's really friendly, um, and it's a really welcoming atmosphere, so it's great. You've got to be really careful, you can't just come in here and jump jump in. It's immediately very, very deep. I don't know how deep it is, 20 metres deep when you first get in. So there's no paddling here and there's no playing around here. It's, yeah, you have to be, you have to be ready for the cold. And you, I wouldn't start swimming at this time of year when it's at its coldest, really. I'd probably start in the summer and then work your way round to the winter.
the aircraft is used to calibrate airports. So it would fly in uh, and it would receive information about where the airport thought it was, but it knew better. So it's actually an aircraft that's better than an airport. The Sea King uh, actually saw service in the Falklands, uh, so it's got a bit of history behind it as well. Other than that, the quarry stuff is pretty cool, but I think those are the best stories.